Hey everybody, happy Thursday and happy Valentine's Day to everyone here right after our February 14th, 2013 show. When do good ideas become bad ideas? This was a little bit of a teaching moment that I stumbled across during the State of the Union of all places as President Obama laid out a list of goals that I actually agree with. Wait for it, wait for it. Oh, the goals are fine. It's how we get there that often determines the difference between conservatism and liberalism. Let me give you three of them and on my overall theme here of good ideas becoming bad ideas. Good idea number one, fixing a lot of roads and bridges. So far, so good. Good idea number two, uh, early education for a lot of kids. The ability to put people in preschool, put your kids in preschool if you want to do that. That's fantastic, too. Good idea number three, making $2 more per hour than you do now. Okay, one, two, three. Good ideas all, right? When do they become bad ideas? When they come under the jackboot of government. Let's go to roads and bridges. Having Washington be the, the transverse colon through which our money funnels, we send everything to Washington and it comes back for roads, bridges, highways, schools. It's ridiculous. If we have roads and bridges to fix in Texas, and we have a few, let's keep the money in Texas and do it. It is insane for my tax money and yours here in Texas, if here's where you are, to go to fix a bridge in Nevada or Montana or Florida. And similarly, it's crazy for their taxpayers to, to see a penny of their money go to fix a bridge that's down the road from my house. So we need to stop this ridiculous tap dance where all the money flows into Washington, goes into some Rube Goldberg device, and then comes back out in, in a a system of patronage and favoritism and corruption and waste that just you know, turns everything into a disaster. Now let's go to educating our children. Who in the world is against educating our children? The uh, White House put out a stat that said that th oh, oh, three out of ten, only three out of ten four-year-olds are in a good preschool. Like this is, this is somehow supposed to make us, uh, you know, the, the, some horrible third world country. Well, you know where a lot of those kids are? You know where some of those other seven out of 10 are? They're at home with their mothers. Imagine that. Now, obviously, if you want to have preschool universally available, that too is a lovely thing. Nobody's making you do it, but if it's there, you've got it. And maybe there are parts of America that don't have it. Once again, this falls to the states. If Texas or Maine or Florida or Nevada or Arizona or Arkansas want to have universal preschool, let them have it. But for President Obama to get up and say, we want to partner with the states. As soon as you hear President Obama say, we want to partner with the states, grab your wallet because he's coming for it. I don't want the White House to partner with my state. I want the White House to leave my state alone. Uh, similarly, if the president ever says, ever refers to America as the wealthiest nation on earth, it, just run screaming with your wallet clenched tight because he's coming for more of your money. This, we are the wealthiest nation on earth, and that gets me into good idea number three that becomes a bad idea when forced by Washington, and that's a minimum wage increase. A minimum wage increase is a bad idea because a minimum wage is a bad idea. What business is it of the federal government what I will pay you to come work for me? If I don't pay you enough, you won't take the job. If I'm not paying you enough, you'll leave. This is how the marketplace works. If I am paying X amount to someone, offering X amount, and they take that job, that's all you need to know. The balance is perfect. I have offered an acceptable wage. The worker has accepted, an obviously, acceptable salary for doing that job. To, to have the government come in and say, well, we need to go from 7.25 to nine bucks. Why not 12? Why not 15? This is a crazy idea. It is an absolute job killer. And, and this is what's really funny. Right now, when jobs, jobs, jobs are the supposed focus of absolutely everyone with a pulse, we're going to make it more expensive for people to hire people. And the president is there saying, if you're, try if you're trying to raise a family on the minimum wage, minimum wage is not for you to raise a family, for crying out loud. A minimum wage is for when you're working a fast food joint when you're 17 or the entry level no matter where you are. The idea of a minimum wage is get in at the entry level, that's why it's the entry level, and then work yourself up from there. That's the way it's supposed to go. So if you have a job where you're making $7.25 an hour, it's your job to earn that raise up to nine bucks an hour. It is not, not Washington's job to tell employers they must pay $9 or any amount. The minimum wage is crazy. So fixing bridges, educating kids, getting you a $2 raise, great, great, and great, all turned into terrible, terrible, and terrible when forced from Washington. 
That's it, my work here is done. Well, my work here is never done. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Friday, starting early, Bill Bennett's Morning in America, 5 to 8, and then locally 8 to 10. All of it right here on 6.60 AM, The Answer. Thanks for listening.